Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Thomas Spark. Welcome back to another video. As you may guys know, I am the one who created the very first VPN tier list. How did I come up with this idea? Well, around six years ago, I was watching iDubs and tier lists were popping off at that time. So I was thinking to myself, what a better way to organize VPNs at a rating system than by tiers to help people choose a VPN just like they would choose a champion in a video game like League of Legends. So I made the tier list, vpntierlist.com. It is mine. However, since then, that doesn't mean that a lot of people haven't tried copying my idea, uh, like this guy, Privacy X, claiming that his tier list is completely unbiased and that he had to cut so many VPNs because they couldn't even make his tier list. However, I kind of call bull on that, despite the fact it's gotten 14K views, um, because he probably just hasn't check, checked out as many VPNs as I have, and he was just kind of too lazy to put them in his tier list. Not only that, his tier list just seems kind of like a copy and paste of what people might say on Reddit. And the fact is, is that he kind of made his thumbnail very clickbait. He put Movad in D tier, um, but if you actually watch his, okay, he has ads on his channel. My channel doesn't have ads, by the way. Why would I recommend ads on a privacy channel? But if you actually look at this guy's video, Molvad is an S tier according to him, which in my opinion has some serious shortcomings, but he clickbaited and tricked people by this thumbnail. So I guess props to him, right? You also have Cyber News, which is basically just a channel to sell you Surfshark Nord and those kind of products. Same with VPN Pro, both these channels copied my idea, um, but they just really are intent on selling a couple different products. And if you look at their tier list, if I can even find it, it's barely even in this video. Uh, so far, uh, where where is the tier list? I can't even find it. It's just like, where is it? Is it even in here? Is it even in here? Is it even in here? Uh, uh, oh, oh, I saw it. Okay. So his tier list has like a couple different VPNs. Uh, where? He's just not even. Okay, here it is. There it is. So he's got like maybe seven or eight. He's missing a lot of VPNs. So pretty much my, my problem with all these tier lists these tier lists is that they don't include most of the VPNs. These people haven't reviewed all the VPNs. They don't have videos proving that. You know, you could say you've looked at every VPN in the world, but if you don't have a video review of that VPN, it doesn't really mean that much, right? And that's where I come in, and that's where this video comes in. I'm gonna be making a visual tier list uh, for you guys, just for the purposes of a video to show you actually what's going on. If you take a look at my channel, you could be like, well, Tom, why, why are you any better? Have you really reviewed all the VPNs? Uh, where are you getting the data from? Well, check this out. Here's all the data I'm taking to make this tier list, pretty much every single VPN out there that's still alive. There are VPNs I may put in the table that are kind of dead. And in fact, I'm gonna be making a dead tier because a lot of VPNs out there aren't really even alive anymore and they've kind of seized development. So we're gonna be doing the uh, tier that I found that has a lot of the VPNs and they'll slowly be adding more images if we need them in this video. I'll be putting timestamps down below as well if you wanna see where certain VPNs end up. Also, all my links in the description down below are affiliate links. Clicking on them usually will get you the best deal on a VPN. Usually it will get you a cheaper deal because the affiliate links do have better pricing than normal VPN links. However, if you don't wanna help support the channel, um, you could just go to the website yourself and you don't have to support me at all. Just know that this video is completely unsponsored no VPN is paying me for this video. This video has no ads. I'm not begging you to sign up for a Patreon with crappy perks. I'm not selling you crappy merch sold in China. And if you join my Discord, you get all the roles and everything like that by free, by chatting, and you don't have to pay anything. All right, guys. So let's get into the tier list. All right, guys. So here is the tier list. And like I said, it doesn't have all the images yet. I'm going to have to upload them. I kind of wanted to just rate these VPNs. Um, you know, and add the images as we go along. So I'm not sure which ones are actually missing here. Um, I just, all right guys, so first up is gonna be AirVPN. Now AirVPN, um, it's an okay VPN. In some ways it's really good, in some ways it's not. Um, what are the good things? Well, it's open source as an open source client. Bad news is, this client is really outdated in my opinion. It's really buggy, it doesn't work that good all the time. There's only really one big development update per year, which means it's not frequently updated. Um, and they still don't have a mobile app in 2023. Those are some pretty serious shortcomings. It also doesn't work the best with Netflix. Um, and um, overall, it just feels like an outdated VPN provider. Now, a lot of people on Reddit like it because of the fact that it has port forwarding. Um, but there are other VPNs that have better overall um, scores, in my opinion, and features that have port forwarding. So Air VPN, where does it go? Well, it's gonna be, I would say, a tier three VPN provider. Next up, we have CyberGhost VPN. And now this is a VPN that used to be a lot bigger than it is today. Um, I don't know why this is here, but you know, it is a big company, Cape. Now, CyberGhost, honestly, I don't think it really gets that many updates anymore. 
Um, it's always kind of been a buggy VPN in my opinion. It's not the best like really in any kind of category. Um, it just kind of has like a really big budget behind it and a big team. And they've kind of used that budget to like buy up websites like VPN Mentor. Um, and now they kind of promote other bigger brands that they've purchased um, like ExpressVPN. So ExpressVPN and CyberGhost are owned by the same people. And now they just seem like they promote ExpressVPN more than a CyberGhost. CyberGhost just kind of seems kind of abandoned in my opinion. I wouldn't really say it's a dead tier VPN because it's still like ongoing, but honestly, tier four just from a combination of, of things. And honestly, guys, for all these, if you want more deals, details exactly why I don't like these VPNs, I've reviewed every one, like I said, here on the channel. You just look up on YouTube, search it, Thomas Spark Review, CyberGhost Review, and I've probably reviewed it four or five times, unlike all those other channels that have never done that. Also, additionally, um, you can check out the rating table too on vpntierless.com. Uh, there's a link for the data table to see exactly where the score is coming from. Next up, we have ExpressVPN. Now, ExpressVPN is probably going to be tier two just for its like size. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think it's that good of a VPN anymore. It used to be a lot better compared to some of the VPNs and where it kind of was in the marketplace at the time. Um, at one point, it was one of the few VPNs that worked with streaming at really good speeds, and it was very intuitive and easy to use. Since then, a lot of VPNs have caught up to that. You know, a lot of VPNs do work with streaming now. Streaming compatibility, the work to unblock Netflix. A lot of VPNs are very easy to use and fluid. And ExpressVPN, in my opinion, has just stagnated. It hasn't really added that many features. Um, it did get bought out by another company. Some of the management working at the top parts of the company were kind of um, in, people kind of were skeptical of the, the choice of those management working at this point in the company. Um, if you want to look up news about that, I'll be putting it on the screen right now. Um, so overall, you know, is ExpressVPN really a VPN I would recommend using? Well, no, but at the same time, it's still a tier two VPN. It's pretty fast. It works fine. It gets the job done. Is it going to be really expensive? Yes. Is it really going to have that many unique features? Not really, but it does work pretty good with streaming and overall, you know, get customer support and everything like that. So it's an okay VPN. I wouldn't say it's like tier one by any means, but tier two is like an okay decent vpn provider with no huge cons it could do better with things like privacy on its website having more open source analytics less tracking going on and overall just have a better reputation as a company overall i don't even really remember what this icon is so i'm going to be putting it into dead tier someone just added this i don't know what that is either we have ip vanish now ip vanish according to my scoring is probably going to be um let me just fix this. This is going to be actually in tier three um, and IP Vanish is going to be in tier four. IP Vanish is pretty similar to CyberGhost in my opinion. It's kind of one of those VPNs that got changed hands a lot. It's been like in the hands of like two different companies. Back in the day, it used to be a lot better than it is now. Kind of like IP Vanish. Strangely enough, it's one of the few VPNs that now has an Apple TV app. I don't know exactly why. It's an okay VPN in most respects, but I just don't think the development really is there anymore for IP Vanish. The privacy audit isn't especially good. It's missing a lot of things like um, having um, open source audits. Well, it's missing a lot of things like having transparent leadership. Um, like I said, it's been acquired. Um, there's not like a court proven no log precedence for IP Vanish. There was some issues in the past with that. It's not really that great for streaming compatibility anymore. And it's missing a lot of cool features like um, split tunneling, ad blocking, Linux GUI, and some of those things. So yeah, I think it deserves kind of tier four. It's definitely kind of stagnated. Now NordVPN is probably one of the biggest VPNs out there. Um, and it's kind of changed a lot on the channel over the years. Now, if you first started watching me six or seven years ago, you know, I hated NordVPN. However, since then, they've really kind of come a long way in my opinion. Although it's always kind of bought its way up to the rankings, I would say, um, in my opinion, but I do think now it kind of deserves a good ranking. And people who say otherwise are just kind of being haters. Um, it's really increased its speeds a lot. Um, it's optimized its server network. Um, it, it really will give you the best speeds for most people around the world. It's got one of the biggest server networks. It's probably one of the best VPNs to unblock streaming restrictions. It almost works in every region. If you want to use the Japanese version of Netflix or the Nigerian one or something like that, it will give you that specific content library, which is really good. It's added cool features like its mesh network technology that lets you kind of share LAN parties and remote into your home network, which is pretty cool, which is kind of like tail scale, their, their implementation with it. Um, it's very easy to use. The interface is very intuitive and they have a good suite of side products that can be bundled in with it too. So overall, I do think it's a decent product now. Is it the 
best best VPN in the world with no improvements? Well, I don't think so. Um, you know, it could have a better uh, analytics and different privacy policies on its website in terms of tracking less uh, marketing and analytics on users that are its customers. But it is a billion dollar company and uh, you can't really expect everything from a company that really does kind of seem like profit is one of its main goals. But at the end of the day, with that being said, it's, it has become one of the biggest VPNs for a reason. And due to that success, it does seem like it's really gotten better just from probably having more money for development and just being a better VPN in that sense. You know, um, having those high scores um, from all these tech magazines for so much has definitely got them a lot of customers. And I think they've used some of that money to actually become a good VPN now in 2023 and going into 2024 so yeah i think it is s tier for a combination of those things is it perfect no but it is a very good vpn for a lot of people especially new users we have perfect privacy now perfect privacy honestly i just was talking about how nord isn't perfect but here we have perfect privacy honestly i don't hear anyone talking about this anymore uh, literally nobody every once in a while there'll be like ra some random show on reddit talking about it um but honestly I, I couldn't tell you what's going on with the company uh, at all. I don't really even have a recent review of it, so I might put it into dead tier. If we take a look on its application, it was last updated in October 22nd, 2020. So yeah, it hasn't really been updated for a while. Not the best look in my opinion, if you're someone who's looking to test it out. If we take a look at their Twitter, um, it hasn't really been, well, strangely enough, they seem active on their Twitter. But yeah, not really actively developing their applications. Maybe they just like using Twitter. There's some people who followed me. All right, guys, going back to the tier list now, um, we have private internet access. Now this is kind of like similar to CyberGhost, IPVanish, some of these really big VPNs back in the day. Um, I, um, private internet access was probably the biggest one out of all these. I mean, you know, where is it today? Um, well, it's not a horrible VPN anymore. And I would say out of all the Capes products, it, it is probably the best one. I would say it's probably better than Express, probably better than CyberGhost. Um, you know, is it going to be a VPN I recommend all the time? Well, not really, um, but it's definitely the strongest out of the tier two VPNs. It's still got a really good application. It's very feature rich. You get okay speeds on it. I kind of wish that the speeds were a little bit better to be honest, but it does work with unblocking almost every streaming service. Um, as a whole, the reputation of the VPN is still pretty good. It's just really the reputation of the company being changed hands. That's kind of left a bad taste in users' mouth. The forum shut down a long time ago. Um, and I would say that the, the VPN is definitely stagnant in terms of the development, but it's kind of resting on its laurels of what it was back in the day. Back in the day, it had the best application and still three or four years later after it's been sold, it still kind of has a really good application. It's pretty good. Although lately I've encountered some bugs. So a little caveat there, I wouldn't really recommend it for most people, but still it's a pretty strong VPN accurately of, as a score. Private VPN, this is a VPN I haven't taken a look at in some time. However, in my last reviews, it, it seemed like development has slowed down a lot and I wouldn't really imagine they're making that much money. Um, I had kind of been in conversations with this guy a couple of years ago. Um, he, This guy named Martin, um, he's pretty cool. I think he still works at the company at least. Um, and they have like some good ideals, like they want to own all their servers. Um, they had kind of had a focus on working with streaming services. But my problem with the company is that they didn't implement WireGuard soon enough. They were very, very, very slow to implement WireGuard, which meant the speeds were really hurting with this one. Um, uh, and as far as I know, like even like two years ago or a year ago, they still hadn't implemented it. You had to download like the configuration files. Um, it just seemed like development had gotten too slow. Um, and overall, I just feel like as a product, it just really didn't seem to have much development. If you take a look on it on the Google Play Store, you can kind of see those sentiments. It hasn't really been updated almost for a year or more, a year and a half. Um, so I definitely think, it, you know, it's an okay product. It's not the worst one in the world. The team is respectable and reputable and everything like that. Um, but I just think it's kind of, um, it kind of slowed down in terms of like what it was able to achieve ultimately for the company. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the tier three rating there. And that's just accurately what the data shows in my table as well. Next up, we could talk about Proton and how this is actually the old logo. And Proton, like Nord, has actually come a long ways in my tier list. They've made some pretty good improvements over the years. They've always had one of the best looking 
streaming applications, but now they could kind of finally back it up with uh, actually having all the features that I would like. Um, they have an extension now, which is good. Um, they have decent speeds, really increased the kind of the um, value in their suite of products and the bundled value of getting Proton Mail, Drive, and all these things. It's a pretty good deal if you do decide to fully invest into the ecosystem. Um, so overall, it's definitely a good product. Um, the customer support tickets could be a little bit quicker. Um, and they could kind of make it a little bit cheaper maybe. Um, and maybe a couple of features here or there are still kind of being developed. Overall though, I would say it's a strong product. It has open source um, GUI. The analytics and everything on the website are very clean. It doesn't really track you at all. Pure VPN. This is a VPN just kind of like the other ones. Um, kind of like stuck in C tier hell. Um, just like CyberGhost, I feel like it's kind of underdeveloped now. Um, they kind of have kind of pushed more energy into making a suite of products, but none of them really have seemed to take off. Um, the customer support is notoriously slow for this one. Just kind of one of those products that has kind of stagnated. One of the biggest VPNs has kind of stagnated. Safer VPN, I'm pretty sure this got like sold to the company that owns um, IPVanish, J2 Global. It's no longer really even a VPN, so it's in dead tier. Surfshark is a VPN that like Nord and Proton has kind of climbed its way at my rankings. I would give it tier one. It's actually my number two rated VPN provider. <clears throat> the reason is, is because they re recently updated their graphical user interface. And it has probably one of the best looking applications I've ever seen with a VPN, which I didn't, that was one of my main complaints before. I just didn't like how it looked and felt to use. And now that it looks and feels good, um, you could kind of, Admire some of the other things about it that are good too. It uses kind of like a similar network to NordVPN. It's owned by the same company that owns both of these products. And you could kind of see that it has a similar strategy. It's very easy to use. It's very fast, works great with streaming services. And I actually think it's bundled offerings are a little bit better than even Nord. If you want to invest into their ecosystem, you could get an antivirus that's pretty good. Some really cool like anonymity, kind of hide your email features. And it has one of the best data broker removal tools on the internet, Incogni bundled in. It's a very good value. And that's one of the reasons it makes tier one. As an aggregate, it also just kind of does well in every category. All right, guys, I'm back. I had to take a small break because my voice was getting tired. Next up, though, we have Torgard. Torgard has long since been one of the best performing VPNs here on the channel, aggregately, and it still is probably the top rated VPN. Um, it's very cheap, especially with my promo code Thomaspark2023. Um, it gives you pretty much a VPN that does everything you need for core VPN use, whether that be proxy, torrenting. Um, the speeds are very, very good. Probably one of the fastest VPNs for what it is, especially with that price point and it being a relatively small company. The customer support is also extremely good. Um, it's probably one of my favorite companies in terms of who runs it. I've talked to the CEO multiple times. He's given free products to some of my community. Some, uh, he's given some routers away, some really powerful routers. Um, so very cool guy, not on social media a ton. And the company kind of reflects that it's kind of like a smaller company. You're not going to see as many people talking about it on Reddit or YouTube because it's just kind of like a smaller company that knows what it does well and does it well and has done it well since 2012. So, and, and since then there's not been any leaks or security issues. So it's a tried and true company. Is that to say it doesn't have cons? Well, I think it does. You know, every VPN has cons. It's just me being objective. Some of the cons with TorGuard, I think its development has kind of been too slow lately. They've promised some features like split tunneling years ago that still are not out today. I think its website is a little bit outdated and a little bit confusing for new users to pick which package they want. Some of its applications feel a little bit clunky to use, um, but, you know, not every VPN is perfect. No VPN is perfect. And in fact, and it does have its share of issues, but as an aggregate VPN, in terms of everything that is important, it does everything pretty well. Um, so there's that. And one of the biggest cons I would say is maybe the streaming compatibility. You do need to buy extra bundles to do that. So for if you're looking to do that specifically, it might not be the best VPN. You might want to go with Nord or Surf specifically for streaming. Next up, we have a VPN called Tunnel Bear. Now Tunnel Bear, honestly, it's, it's pretty much just kind of like a, Cyber Ghost, Pure VPN, some of these other ones. It's not even on my tier list right now. Um, I would honestly say that, like, I just feel like it's kind of dead. It did get some kind of update in July. Um, it does get some kind of updates, some very, very small updates. Um, but honestly, uh, uh, you know, maybe it's not dead tier. Um, probably, honestly, to be more fair, it's probably in like the same kind of tiers. IP Vanish is still like an ongoing company that somewhat is alive. 
but it got purchased by McAfee. Um, as a whole, it was always a simple VPN, even when it was like more popular. And now it's just, I never hear anyone talking about it. It's kind of dead in most aspects. I mean, it's getting a little bit more updates than some of these other VPNs. Um, like Perfect Privacy, for example, has been updated for like three years. So I won't give it dead tier just for that reason. But yeah, it's not even updated enough to warrant me reviewing it that often. Although if you look here on the channel, I probably reviewed it three or four times. And every time I said, it's just too simple. Ultra VPN is just a VPN that's so small and so meaningless. I don't even like have any thoughts on it. VEPN was another VPN that was like being spammed on Reddit a lot. I, I don't know what VPN this is. So I'm going to put it into dead here. I think this is VPN AC. Now this is a VPN that was like, it's like main claim to fame was that it, it claimed like 10 years ago that TorGuard had like copied some code of their extension or something like that. Tolgard like never even really bothered exp like expanding upon it because it was like such a meaningless kind of complaint. Um, some people like to bring that up as like their claim to fame, but if you actually like, look at VPN AC, it's like could you even like name the? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's this one, but most people I would say couldn't really even name the specific icon. Um, let's look on see when the last time it was updated if it even has an application. Uh, VPN.ac. Let's see. I think it does. Um, here it is. Um, so if we look at the application, it got one update in November 13th. So it's like, it's been updating a little bit the last couple of months, but and then you look like, boom, three years ago. So, and then 2008, so two years. So if you want a VPN that every two or three years, they might put out like one or two update and maybe, but honestly, no one really talks about this VPN. Um, I have reviewed it here on my channel, I do believe. Um, but, but I honestly can't even tell you what the application looks like. That's just like how little, you know, of an influence it has on the marketplace right now. I'm going to probably put it into dead tier. Although I would say from my memory, it is probably better than some of these VPNs here in the dead tier. Um, these are all VPNs that are kind of dead and not really, uh, developed anymore. Um, Zook VPN, this is kind of an interesting VPN. I don't really remember it too much. I remember reviewing it here on my channel a couple times. It's not currently my tier list because it's not really actively developed anymore either. Um, a lot of these VPNs have just kind of gone to the graveyard as common in such a popular um, competitive environment. I'm kind of curious to see if this one is still updated. Um, yeah, it seems to be updated somewhat. I'm, I'm really surprised some of these VPNs are still ongoing to be honest. Um, this one isn't bad. I reviewed it here on my channel before. Um, it just wasn't really that good um, in terms of like its speeds and stuff like that, I do believe. I'll put it into tier three um, just because that's kind of what I remember it being in my reviews. Next up, we have Viper VPN. Now, this is a VPN that used to be a lot more popular. It's still pretty good. The application looks good. It works fine. The speeds are a little bit slow, and I wish it was a little bit more actively developed. Um, it's done by a company called Golden Frog, and it seemed to be a much bigger VPN. But nowadays, you don't really see many people talking about it. Um, it's updated every once in a while, but like you can see, there's a year-long gap between the development, another year-long gap, and it really isn't really developed all that often, and it kind of stagnated and hasn't really done too much. Um, but it's still a decent VPN for like what it was, kind of like private and PIA Express and Viper VPN. It's kind of like resting on the laurels of what it used to be. And really five or six years ago, it would have been like one of the best VPNs to use. And now it just really hasn't done much since then and kind of rests on like what it was, which now is tier two instead of tier one. So now we are missing a couple of VPNs. We already ran through all the VPNs that was in this table, whoever made this table. Um, so now we're going to add in some of the ones we're missing. Now what I'm going to do is pretty much add all the VPNs that were not in this tier list. And yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we got to add Molvad. So let's take a little picture of the mole. We got to add Hi Dodd Me. This is another VPN that a lot of people don't talk about. Personal VPN is just one I talked about. It's actually one of the older VPNs, which is kind of funny. Uh, Weetopia is the company behind it. And they kind of made a business through selling a lot of like different kind of uh, different kind of things that no one really talks about anymore. I was talking to the guy in Discord just a, a couple uh, a week ago. He wanted me to review his VPN, and I gave it an okay score. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but here we are moving down. We also have AdGuard VPN. This is another one that is, you know, not very popular, but I still want to rate it. Um, we also have Azure VPN, another VPN that's smaller. 
not too much development, but we will read it in a second. We have OVPN and VPN that kind of is confusing when you think about the fact that there's an open VPN protocol. I don't know if they did that on purpose, um, but it always is kind of annoying kind of looking it up. We also have Hala VPN, one of the older VPNs that used to be a lot bigger back in the day and caused a lot of controversy. And finally, I will add Brave VPN as well to this little tier list. And let's go ahead and upload all these images. All right, so we're going to choose the files. Pretty cool, huh? All right, guys, so it looks like my mouse might have gotten into one of those, but oh well. Let's go ahead and rate Movad. Now, I'm going to be putting Movad into... Um, um, C tier or tier 3 according to this tier list um, system here. Um, now why am I rating this one tier 3? Well that's because while Molvad is really good at certain things it's also really bad at some things. Um, one of the cons with Molvad is that you're not going to be able to unblock any geo-restrictive service whether that be Netflix, Prime Video, HBO Max or anything like that. As far as it's from its creation it's never put any emphasis into anything besides just basic VPN stuff. Um, it really doesn't have any extra features, any extra bundles. The most you're going to get with Movad is they made like a browser that you can use with it, which is basically just like Firefox, but it has Movad's logo on it. And it has some kind of like Tor components, I guess. Um, but it's really not that much better than Firefox in my tests. Um, and you don't really need Movad to use it with it. In fact, you could use any VPN with the browser. And in some cases, that's actually better in my opinion. Um, overall though, uh, Movad is, has a cult following. It's also had some features removed lately, like port forwarding, which means you're not gonna be able to maximize your speeds with it. Something like TorGuard does support for port forwarding. Same with Proton and some of the other ones which I'll discuss soon. So while it certainly has a lot of hype on Reddit, you gotta keep in mind, it's kind of like a, f a fanboy kind of thing, a uh, uh, cult following that really likes Movad. I mean, you know, it does some things good. Um, for one, it doesn't really have that many sponsorships or advertisements and it has no affiliate program. That said, just because a VPN doesn't have an affiliate program doesn't mean it doesn't do any advertising. It just means it decides where to spend its money. And while Movad doesn't have an affiliate program and some people lot it and say, you know, hey, it's the only trustworthy VPN that doesn't have an affiliate program. Well, they also kind of, um, kind of rebrand their product and get sell to more customers through stuff like Malwarebytes and some of these other VPNs that aren't actually that good and do end up kind of confusing people when choosing VPNs. Um, you know, I could put Malwarebytes on this list too, but it's basically just Molvad, but worse. And even people who like Molvad do criticize um, Molvad for kind of re-releasing their product multiple times in that way. Um, so yeah, it's not perfect, despite what some people may say, tell you. And that's just my final thoughts on that. It deserves a ranking around tier three for what it is. Is it one of the best private VPNs? Sure. Is it the best VPN? Mm, well, not really. Anyways, guys, we also get to talk about uh, personal VPN. Now, this is the one I was just talking about. Uh, I would say it's actually a B tier VPN. Um, it's not bad, the people behind it. It's definitely a smaller company. Oh, no marketing at all, basically. I, I didn't even hear about this one until like a week ago. And the guy reached out to me on Discord. But it's a decent product. The pricing isn't bad. It's got WireGuard. The speeds are okay. The application works. It's just kind of a very plain VPN. Next up, we have Hi.me. Now, Hi.me is actually going to be rated just above Proton. Hi.me is one of those services that has been around for a long time, but it's not always gotten the limelight it deserves, in my opinion. It's got a very future-rich application. Across the board, it's very strong. Very good privacy policies. Um, it works good with streaming. All around, it's a very good product. What are the downsides? Well, some of the speeds for me aren't personally the best. In my location in the United States, I don't get the best speeds with it. Um, it's also not that actively developed. It's a little bit slower in terms of development. I wouldn't say it's anywhere close to some of these dead tier VPNs or tier three or tier four VPNs in terms of development, but usually it's like one to two big updates a year. And that's about kind of all you get with high.me. It hasn't really changed too much since I've been reviewing it. And I could kind of seeing it being kind of like some of these other VPNs, like maybe PIA or Viper VPN, which at the, at the time they were, they were made were very good, but slowly kind of get depreciated and just not as developed and the people who made the company made enough money and kind of moved on to other tech products. And that could certainly be the case for Hi.me. Most of their focus seems to be kind of on making sales on their website and getting more people to just buy the product they have rather than kind of improving, adding more servers and kind of increasing it. It's a kind of value to its customers it already does have. That's just my opinion though. I still think it's an excellent product and way better than a lot of other VPNs. Next up, we have IFC VPN, and this one is honestly going to be in C tier, just like some of these other ones like CyberGhost and stuff like that. It's owned by the same company that owns Pure VPN, and honestly, it's pretty much an identical product to Pure VPN. I've reviewed it here on the channel a couple times, and it's really nothing that special. Um, they kind of like to sell their product on Stack Social and some of those things, 
to get a lot of customers, but honestly, not that great of a VPN. Cactus VPN is a VPN I used to like a lot. Um, this is a VPN that has a very cheap price. It works decent with streaming. It's decent speeds. It's just one of those VPNs that the team is based like in Romania or something like that, or I'm not quite, I, uh, somewhere kind of different, um, but the, the team is very friendly, but at the same time, there really hasn't been that much development. I'm not really sure actually what the team has been working on lately. If I look at the application, we can kind of get an idea of how much it's been updated. I kind of have a feeling without even looking at it right now, that it's gonna probably be some time. And yep, it looks like I was correct. It's been around two years since we've seen an update from this one. And while it was a very good VPN at the time, it seems almost like when I stopped talking about it, they also kind of stopped updating it. Um, it, it I did I did kind of really like this VPN during the pandemic. I feel like at that point, it was like one of the best VPNs for like what it was, but since then they really haven't put any effort into it at all. And like a lot of VPNs, it, it seems to just kind of been stagnant. And that's kind of why it's slowly died down in the ranking. So there you go. Funny little thing is I'm on the front page of Cactus VPN since I did give them a good review around three years ago. And I'm still there to this day. So there you go. A little funny tip. Next up, we have AdGuard VPN. Uh, this is a VPN I'm going to be putting. Uh, according to my rankings, it's going to be around a C tier VPN. Uh, somewhere around here. Um, it, honestly, I think AdGuard makes a pretty good DNS service, but the VPN is just simply too plain. It's not very feature rich and it's just not as good as some of the other fully fledged VPNs out there in my opinion. And I find that true for most of the other kind of sister products of these antivirus or DNS companies. The VPNs just aren't as good as some of the best VPNs out there. Now we have something like Hala VPN. This is going to be a D tier VPN. Um, you know, it can do some things pretty well. It can block geo restrictions very well. It's not the most expensive by any means, but if you look at a history of the product and privacy policies and stuff like that, it's not a very kind of trusted VPN provider. So that's definitely something that you are not going to probably want to use. And that's why it is a, uh, a tier four VPN. Now, honestly, it probably does have more development than a lot of these dead tier VPNs, but that's kind of what it is. Now we have something like Azure VPN. This one is also going to be in C tier. Um, just another one of those VPNs that has a lot of promise and a lot of privacy and security and stuff like that. But again, it just seems like one of those VPNs that you don't really hear much about anymore. And I don't think it also has that much development either. Um, if you look for it on the app store, you can't even really find it. I don't even know if they have an application. So yeah, definitely not a good look. Um, honestly, you know, you could even make an argument if we're putting it in a dead tier. But as it stands right now in my last ranking, I did give it a tier three since it's an okay product for what it is. Now we have OVPN. Now OVPN is one of those products I actually did like quite a bit. Um, it's currently not even really, uh, is it even on my tier list? Yep, it is on my tier list. It just has such a short word that it's kind of hard to find. OVPN is one of those products that's very interesting. I really like the company behind it. I like the guy who ran it. Um, it, it was always a very small VPN, but it kind of drew my attention because it's one of the few VPNs that's been court proven not to collect any logs. It went to court, refused to give up logs on Pirate Bay people, and it, it did give me a good measure of trust for that. I even interviewed the CEO on my channel, and he's a really cool guy called David. However, they did kind of stagnate in my opinion. They didn't really update kind of things with WireGuard quick enough. They didn't add more servers. I know speeds kind of started to drop. And while they do have a cool router company called Vilfo, I think the company just is really too small for, you know, to compete with some of the bigger providers out there. Additionally, they also lost some points in, and in my terms, credibility. They sold the company to Pango, I think it is, which is not that reputable and trusted of a company in the VPN and privacy space. It definitely kind of hurt the reputation. Overall, while I do like some of the people that work at the company and, and was friendly with them in the past, I don't really think it's a VPN I really recommend that much anymore. I just think it never really was properly developed and it kind of lived up to the potential I thought it had at the time. VPN Unlimited, this is a VPN I'm gonna be putting um, in D tier. Um, it, I think this VPN did have potential at one point. It was very cheap, probably one of the cheapest ones, and it gave me pretty good speeds for the time. However, this was kind of like in the open VPN era, and I haven't really tested it too much since that era, although there's probably a recent review on the channel where I did. It's just one of those VPNs that's not that memorable for what it is. It kind of makes itself out to be, seem the best and fastest VPN, but honestly, in my least recent tests, it really wasn't any of those things. Next up, we have um, uh, what is this SVPN? Not quite sure what this is, um, but we have Brave VPN and Brave VPN is something I'm going to be putting into D tier. Uh, recently I made a video on this about how it kind of installed itself on your computer, even though you don't want it. 
Um, if you're using Brave on your computer, you probably actually have this VPN installed on your computer. This was a pretty big controversy, and for how bad Brave VPN is, I could see why. Um, it's not even a fully fledged VPN application, it doesn't even have an app, it just kind of is stuck inside your browser and works more like a proxy to anonymize your IP address. So overall, definitely kind of a doozy. I realized it did forget a couple products, uh, that being uh, Winscribe and iVPN. Now these are two very interesting VPNs because uh, both of these VPNs have had problems with the management in the past. Now there aren't really that many VPNs where this is an issue for me. Usually there is, if there is some kind of problem with the review process, I talk to the team um, and the CEO or whatever it may be if they really have that big of a ch problem with my channel. Um, but we usually in those situations <laughs> we're able to work something out and uh, make sure that the reviews are fair. Um, and that the company kind of respects my criteria and what I'm doing here and I've been able to work out with pretty much any company that has had issues with the channel. However, that hasn't really been the case with iVPN and Winscribe. Um, I think the people that run these companies are a bit toxic. With iVPN specifically, they kind of have their whole thing where it's like they're like the VPN fighting against the world. They're fighting against not only the world, but also a lot of the other VPNs on the marketplace. Every week it seems like they're posting a blog post saying, you know, hey, VPNs can't do this for you. Um, don't use most VPN providers. We're so much better than these VPN providers, and here's why. I think it's a very toxic way of advertising, and there are there is a certain amount of people that kind of like that about iVPN, and all the power to you. At the end of the day, it's not a bad product. I think it has one of the better looking applications and pretty good security and privacy overall. However, that said, it is extremely expensive, around a $13 a month or $100 a year, and it can be up to around $300 for three years. They also have upsells with like multi-hop and some other things like simultaneous connections, which I'm not personally a fan of. I think a VPN should include everything with its base model, and that's consumer-friendly practices in my opinion. That said, I think iVPN for those reasons gets a D tier rating just because it's so expensive and it doesn't even include streaming compatibility for what you pay. So while it does have some really big upsides, it also has some really big downsides. There you go. Next up, we have Winscribe. Now, just like uh, iVPN, I've had some issues with Winscribe's management. Um, with iVPN, I didn't go into it, but specifically, they've kind of talked shit about my channel in message boards and forums, which I think is not a professional look for the company. If you have a problem with my reviews and criteria, come to me personally, say, hey, you know, we didn't like this about your review. You know, here's what you got wrong. With iVPN, that never really happened. And in fact, like four or five years ago, they did come to me and say stuff like that. And, you know, I responded to them and, you know, but it's not like I said anything about their product that wasn't wrong. So after that, instead of like coming to me and talking to me professionally and discussing, you know, if I made any mistakes with their product, they instead just kind of resorted to um, flaming me on message boards and stuff like that and saying, you know, you shouldn't use my channel because they don't like my review system. It's not a very professional way to go about it. And that kind of leads me into Winscribe next. Now, Winscribe I actually think is a much better product than iVPN. I think it has a broader appeal for what it is and what it does and what it can do and how it's used and the pricing too. The only problem with Winscribe is that I do believe a lot of the management is in this kind of toxic Yegor cult. Now there is a guy who runs Winscribe named Yegor and he's kind of an interesting guy. On one hand he's very friendly and kind of personable and on the other hand he could be very toxic and elitist and not friendly or personable at all. And in fact, he's kind of like a little bit of a troll, a little bit of a toxic troll. He used to make these videos smashing consoles in front of lines. He would wait in a line. And then when he got the console, like the PS3 or something like that, he would smash it in front of everyone waiting just for the memes. It's a me, Mario. Hello. Yes. Well, I'll remember that one tonight. We spent. The they should go die in the fire. They should go die in the fire. Yes. Well, I'll remember that one tonight. We spent the whole night waiting with this guy, and we can tell you he is nuts. <laughs> this guy is a serious douche, and he needs to get laid fast. So please, ladies, find him, get him out of his craziness. Oh yeah. I think you guys are. Yeah. Pretty, pretty busted. Yeah, man, look at this baby. You, what did you do? I'll do it. Seriously. I stand in line for like 18 fucking hours so a douchebag could come out here and smash it and then eBay is fucking second unit. Hope y'all put up douchebag comments and I hope a big pile of shit falls on them. Thank you. If that's the kind of humor you like, well then you're definitely gonna like Winscribe and it kind of has that sense of humor in the entire community. 
it can be funny to certain people, but for a lot of other people, if you don't fit that mold, it's very toxic and elitist. I was like okay with that to some extent until it got too much. Eventually people started raiding my Discord, harassing my community members, and eventually it got so much of an issue that I kind of started trying to move away from talking about Windscribe and it never really ended up being a positive thing for my channel. Eventually, Winscribe decided to cut all ties to anyone who liked their product or promoted their product, which is kind of a shitty move. And from there, they just kind of went scorched earth on anyone they didn't like, including me. Um, they ended up leaking some of my DMs with them over some kind of disagreement. Uh, when I was covering one of their security issues they had, which their, some of their servers got seized and they weren't encrypted properly. And yeah, my relationship with them pretty much went down to dumpster fire even though I did have a good relationship with them prior. You know, so with those things in mind, it's a decent product. Do the people running it necessarily um, make an inclusive community? Um, I don't really know about that. Anyway, guys, this is pretty much the final tier rankings. Um, I've pretty much rated every single relevant VPN out there. There could be a couple that I didn't mention here, just but they've become so irrelevant and they never really had relevancy. I didn't really add them into the tier list here, but this is pretty much all the biggest VPNs that have ever been and have been too. I would recommend checking out the tier one products. I'll be putting links for those in the description down below. Like I said, those links will get you the best price. You, there'll be promo codes as well. Each one of these tier one products is good for a certain amount of people. Tier two is okay, um, but just not as good as tier one in my opinion. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you again very soon.